What's up guys? Welcome to the channel, back to DJing. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built and organized a fairly substantial music collection throughout COVID for mobile DJing. Stay tuned. Right, so you're putting together a DJ business uh, throughout COVID, trying to make the best of this time, but you're not quite sure how to go about building a substantial music collection so that you can feel confident going into your gigs, knowing that you'll have all the music that you'll need. So I'm gonna show you how I went about it. I built my music collection. I have about 35,000 tracks. Um, a lot of those are repeats because I have different edits, of course. But nonetheless, it's 35,000 tracks of fairly well-organized music ready to go. All I'd really have to do is some finishing touches before I start gigging. So let's see if I can get you into my screen here. So we're going to start off having a look at my record box library here to give you an idea of what I have and how it's organized. So as you can see over here, I've got all our playlists here and uh, well, folders for our playlists. As some of you might know, I'm a avid roller skater. I've got my skate music. I've got friends playlists in here, um, along with a bunch of my skate lists. If you look here, we've got decades. And this here is kind of the key to getting a start on getting everything organized and building your library. As you can see, I've got 50s to 2020s folders, and each of these folders has playlists for each genre. And that right there is basically kind of how you get it started. You gotta have kind of a, at least a main backbone to your music that's well organized that you can pull from to get your playlist. So let's jump over to the other laptop now and have a look at how I've got my music. Let me just switch you over here. Whoop. So here we have my choice of record pool for a starter DJ to get started putting together their mobile DJ music library. Um, the reason I choose direct music service is because they have a pretty good backlog of music from 50s to 2020s. They have all kinds of clean edits, dirty edits, intro, outro edits, acapellas, pretty much anything a DJ could need. And from my experience, they're more likely to have some of the songs that you're looking for than some of the other record pools that I've tried. So let's have a quick look at the subscription fees. And I'm gonna explain the way I did this. You have Starter, which is $29.95 per month, and that gets you 40 downloads per month. Um, you can do it by the year for $269.95, which gives you a $90 discount. You have Semi Pro, which is $44.95 per month, and get that gets you 80 downloads per month. You do that yearly for $359.95, which will save you $180. Or you can go with Pro for $64.95, and you get unlimited downloads per month and you could pay for that yearly and save $330. So the way I did this was I went with Pro and I got Pro for I believe one month and downloaded as much music as I possibly could. And basically I downloaded almost everything. <laughs> basically pretty much their whole music library other than things I knew I for sure didn't want. So let's look at how I did that. I'll log in here. As you can see, they have decades here, and this basically is the key to getting your music library started. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the details of direct music service. I'm basically talking about how to get the initial bulk of music so that you're confident going to your gigs, knowing that you have a pretty good selection. So if you look under decades, you can see here, they have 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10s and 20s and let's have a look here so if we go to 90s and you click on year to organize it by the years and then what I did was I pretty much downloaded all of it um, you don't have to download all of it you can pick through and download what you want if you don't want all the different edits but 
either way you do it, do it one chunk at a time. So if you're doing the 50s, do the 50s. If you're doing the 90s, do the 90s. And go through, download all the 90s you want. And as you can see, when we get to the bottom here, there's quite a few pages of each, so this is gonna take a long time. You gotta settle in for the long haul. My opinion is anybody who wanted to do this should have started right at the beginning of COVID, but kind of looks like things are going crazy again anyway, so you might have a lot of time on your hands. So get on it, start one decade at a time, downloading all the music that you want, um, as you download it, keep it in your download folder. And when you're done your downloading session, if you get tired, remember what page you're on, remember what song you're on, or write it down. And then go into your software, import all of those songs. And let's jump back over to my record box here again. And once you're back in your software, import that chunk of songs. So they'll probably be in your downloads folder. Um, I keep each chunk in the downloads folder until they're imported and sorted into the folders I want them in. And then I move that chunk into my main music folder and relocate the files from my software after that. Uh, you can do it however you want. You could probably, you might want to sort them ahead of time into your main music folder, but then it might make it harder to find them to import them into your software. So I like to keep them in the downloads file, import them into my software, organize them into the proper playlists and then move them over to my main music file. So if we look at my 80s here, I have not sorted my 80s yet. We look at my 90s again, you can see they're sorted into each genre for the, for the decade. My 80s aren't sorted yet, so that will be a good example to show you how to do this. So we go to my main 80s folder. Okay, and you can see I've got about 2,150 80s tracks. Now, if you were DJing, that would be a lot to comprehend and sort through. It'd be a lot to also prep. You can see only a few of these are prepped. Um, those ones that are prepped are the ones that are in my favorites list, most likely, because I have a couple live streams that I need some 80s and 70s for, so I just went ahead and picked out some of my favorites and prepped them so I would have that because I hadn't started sorting my 80s yet. So anyways, let's do an example of how now you can sort your 80s. So go over here and sort by genre, and then you can go through and make a playlist for each of these genres. So we'll start with 80s alternative. Now I'm not going to do all these right now for you guys, obviously. So you're going to go through the whole list of 80s and make a playlist for each one of these genres. I'm going to go ahead off camera and make all these playlists. Uh, I'll see you in just a moment. All right. As you can see, I have added all the playlists in my 80s section. And just to explain, we're on my main list here now and where it says 600 done, that means that I've sorted through the first 600 songs of this list to pick out my favorites, just so you know what that is. So anyway, lists are done. So let's sort this by genre. And as you can see here, I have an other list. Now that other list is for anything that doesn't really have a place so that I can sort through it later. So there's no tag here. So all these ones here will go into that other list just to speed up this process of getting this sorted. So all these ones here that don't have a tag, I'm gonna put them in the other list and I'm gonna just sort through them one by one later. That's just a quick way of pri prioritizing what you've got to do here. So that gets those, that first section out of the way. In fact, actually these ones here could go into their lists. Pop and rock, those two into the rock list. Okay, and then continue on, alternative, rock, and I'll put that into rock as well. If you want to make a booty bass list, you can. I'm just doing hip hop. And that's the thing is you can kind of customize your lists to suit you. Electronic. 
But as you can see, this is a little bit tedious, especially in some of these sections where uh, it's like track by track. But then you get into bigger sections where you can take out a whole chunk of it all at once. So you gotta be prepared to be in, in for the long haul, obviously. But if you want a nice full music library, you gotta kinda put in the work to do it. Dance, disco. Now here you can get a nice big chunk all at once. All into disco. But here's the thing. Then you gotta go back and get just the funk into funk. Some of these I did already because this is my second take on this. That's why it's coming up that they're already in there. R and B into R and B. Just a couple. Mm, freestyle. So you get the idea. I'm not gonna do all this for you right now, but you go through and organize it all by tags. Let's get rid of a nice big chunk here with hip hop. And you gotta go back through again, get all the extras, freestyle. You get the idea. So you carry on like that, get all your 80s done, and then you move on to your 90s or whatever order you're doing them in. Just make sure you kind of do one decade at a time. That'll make it easier to keep it all organized until you're completely done. And that's basically how I recommend that you get your base library together. And then from there, you can start looking for additional playlists. You can start researching online what kind of music to have for weddings and that kind of thing. Also be sure to check out Spotify playlists. Um, those are a great resource to find out what people are listening to these days. And make sure you check out TikTok because that'll give you an idea of what songs are trending right now. And then you make playlists out of that or, and you can look up things like Mobile Beat Top 200, get that playlist on your laptop to start with. And when you search up those playlists, look for those songs in the, in the music that you currently have on your software now from uh, downloading off DMS. And then if you don't happen to have it in your library that you just created through direct music service, then you can look for any remaining songs elsewhere, such as maybe another record pool, or just download them from Amazon or iTunes, and just continue to make playlists. Always make playlists, make playlists, make playlists. This will give you your, your bulk of the, your music that you need to get by but then you're gonna to have to start making playlists and then you're gonna to have to start prepping music. And I recommend basically as you make playlists, prep those playlists. So get your cue points ready and any final tagging that you wanna do and that kind of thing. And there's a couple of books I wanna recommend as well. The first one being How to Be a Wedding DJ by James Lorem, Rock the Dance Floor by Phil Morse, and The Wedding DJ Bible by Neil Smith, the Dandy DJ. Um, I listened to all three of those books on Amazon and they're a great resource for getting your DJ business started. They go into all the details and one of the details they go into is putting your music library together. So that's another great way that you can uh, get some tips on how to do that as well. So yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there. I'll put some links in the description for those books that I mentioned. Make sure you like and subscribe if you got some value out of this. We'll catch you next time. Ciao.